In June of 2016, firefighters were called when neighbors noticed that the home of single mother Melissa Norby was on fire. After they extinguished the flames, the firefighters searched the home and they found Melissa deceased under a burnt mattress. They noticed that she was bound with duct tape with bruising around her neck. Concerned neighbors informed the police that Melissa had a 10-year-old son, but further investigation revealed that her son was safe with relatives. The local news reported the fire, and that's when Amanda, who was a longtime friend of Melissa's, realized that the home that had caught fire was that of her friend. Amanda had dropped off her five-year-old daughter, Brittany, earlier that day to Melissa so she could babysit. Amanda immediately called police, but was informed that only Melissa was found in the home. The police told Amanda that perhaps her daughter had become frightened and was hiding in the woods near the scorched home. After a thorough search of the area surrounding the home, the police came up empty-handed. They realized that something wasn't right and they began an investigation into Melissa's life. During an interview, Amanda told them that Melissa loved to have rough sex and really enjoyed daddy and little girl scenarios. Remembering the bruising around Melissa's neck, the police looked into current boyfriends of Melissa's. They looked into Melissa's social media and found that she had a new lover named Chance. Chance's real name was Jacob Kinn, and he was their prime suspect. Jacob was on probation for posting an ad on Craigslist looking for a young girl to take pictures of. An undercover officer posing as a mother arrested Jacob and he pled guilty to the charges. They immediately called Jacob's probation officer, Tiffany, and requested that she have Jacob come in for questioning. I just told him his cell phone didn't put him there. Where were you when Tiffany called you? I believe. Stand on the dock in your vehicle? Where were you? I was get, packing up, getting ready to leave anyways. Okay. And what time did she call you? Um, look at well, your phone. No, it was look like your phone. 10, 23 or 20. Look in your phone. Show me your show me the call. We can see the time. <clears throat> it was ten twenty three or ten twenty seven and my phone started beeping and I had to call her back. Okay. Jacob claims that when his probation officer called him, he was fishing at Clear Lake, but the detectives already know that his phone had pinged on a cell phone tower in Big Fork, Minnesota, which is about eighty miles in the opposite direction of the lake where he said he was fishing. They are bringing this to his attention demanding an explanation. You see that lake right there? Yeah. That's where you are. Mm -hmm. That's where your cell phone is. Okay. That's... Yeah, I, I said I got that. Okay. I, I just wanted to show you the map, a clear picture. So that's, you know... Yeah. And your cell phone tower is closer to that than it should have pinged up. No, I, I said I got that. I don't know how that would have happened, but yeah, I wasn't in Big Fork. I had no reason to be in Big Fork. I don't know why you know, I pinged off the Big Fork Tower. I have no reason to lie about where I was tonight. This gas can, have you seen this before? Does it look familiar? Nope. It looks familiar. I own a few gas cans. Did you own one like that? I own one like it, and it's at my house. Would any reason why your DNA would be on that gas can? No. And if it was? You couldn't explain it? No. Okay. I do own a gas can like that. You do? Okay. I own several gas cans like that. The detectives know that using a passive approach right away is not going to work in this interrogation so they waste no time in telling Jacob that they have evidence and witnesses against him. At this point, they do not have enough evidence to arrest Jacob, so what they need now is a confession. Here's the deal. Chad and I, well, we can't get over. Melissa talked to her friend in Nebraska. She's dating a guy, or seen a guy with blue eyes has a food truck. That's you. She's telling the people that. Okay, hang on. Her cousin in the cities, Jake owns a food truck, sells food by Rutgers. Um, that's you. That would Co be me. Co-workers. 
describe you. Okay. What? No. And has anybody seen you with her? Here's the deal. That one night encounters, maybe because you didn't go to the bar dancing with her and no one saw you. Why would Melissa brag about you or having a relationship with you to someone that doesn't even know you? You know, they're in the city. Four states away. Yeah. I, I could be lying to Chad that I'm I'm, I'm dating uh, uh, some supermodel. You know? Well, Chad would know because I worked at, you would see me, he would know, you know? Or someone that lives in Nebraska in the cities, they don't know you, they'll never run into you. Why would Melissa say she has a relationship with you? She could say anybody. She could. Why would she give your name? So, I don't know. And that's, if it's not just one person, Jake, her son talks about you. Jacob feels confident that all of their evidence is circumstantial, and he does his best to remain calm. At this point, he can leave if he wants, but he stays because he wants to see exactly how much evidence they have against him. An innocent person would most likely get mad and leave, yet Jacob sits back and listens, asking questions when he can. Her cousin, co-workers, this girl in Nebraska, that's five different people that say you, it's you. I've never met any of them. So. I, I know. So why, why is Melissa describing you? She could say to her friend in the city, she could say she's dating the mayor of Bemidji, right? Yeah. Why you? I don't know. Because she had a crush on me a long time ago, and she wanted to date. I already told you this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's years ago. It, you know, a year ago, two years ago, yes. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense that she doesn't even work at Anderson Fabric anymore. I don't According know. According to you, you haven't, you haven't seen her. Uh, I haven't seen her or talked to her in six, eight months. Okay. You recognize this little girl? I already answered that question. The entire focus of our evening is this little girl. Yeah. Okay. We have to go and tell her parents, this community, and everyone in this building that we've done every, everything we can to find her. I don't, take, I don't think that's true. Take something bad happened. Okay? Something bad happened. Something if, something happened, if something got out of control and somebody ended up dead and this little girl is somewhere, whether she's alive or whether she's gone, we have an obligation to everyone to bring her home. Mm -hmm. They continue to ask Jacob to tell them where Brittany is, but he continues to deny knowing anything at all. You will see Jacob admit to the fact that his whereabouts the previous night is really hard to explain. What Jacob is doing is he is trying to figure out a solution to his problem, but the detectives know this, and they continue to question him without giving him a chance to think of a lie. Jacob, you could help us with that in any way. I would if I could, but I, I don't Jake, know what you said. Jake, if you could, I know it's tough. I know it's really tough to, to think about what's going to happen and all that kind of stuff, but I'm saying this right now. There are people out there that would support you if you said, you know what, I made a mistake. I made a mistake, I overreacted, and this little girl is, is uh, we can bring her home. Let's do that. The three of us together, let's bring this little girl home. Let's bring her home to her parents. They need the closure. Sifra, I don't know where she's at. But she I don't us. have her. I, the closure. You're, you're insisting that I have her or I know where she's at. I am. And I don't. Okay. I've told you my whereabouts. The only thing that sketchy is where I was tonight. And that's that's the big issue. Yeah. That's a huge I, issue. I can't Jake. explain that. I know where I was. And, that, and, that's, and that's our worry. Jake, if, and we if you did something to this little girl, that wouldn't happen. Why? Because I don't have her. I didn't have her. I wasn't there. 
That's why. Okay. One strategy that interrogators like to use is to give their suspect another reason as to why they would commit the crime. They will say, maybe it was an accident or perhaps someone else did it, just to get the suspect to give them more information. The detectives give Jacob another way out by saying that perhaps it was an accident because they were having rough sex. Uh, you know, the only, the, what you have is a bunch of people saying, I'm dating her, which happened before when she told people I was dating her. No, this is just no. racist stuff. Yeah, and Jake, it's not dating, Jake, it's just sex. Yeah, Jake, oh, okay. it's rough okay. sex. Oh, and she died on accident? Let's talk about that. Let's fix it. Okay, that's fixable. Okay? She was into bondage. She was into rough sex. If this little girl, you panicked and did something to her, maybe she's okay. Maybe we can get her home. I hope she is okay. So do I. I didn't do anything. But if she's not okay, we can explain that too. I didn't do anything to her and I haven't seen her. Okay. And I'm sorry, I can't help you find her. Jake, what I we're wish gonna, I could. What we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to proceed. We're going to, um, we're going to collect some evidence and the evidence will show either you did or you didn't. The detectives just do not have enough evidence at this point, so there is not much more they can do. They have a gas can near the burned home that they have yet to test for fingerprints, and they have a cell phone pinging off a tower 80 miles from a lake where Jacob said he should have been fishing. They know that they are at a disadvantage, but they do their best to make Jacob feel like they have enough evidence to arrest him. Okay, like what? That gas can? Okay. That gas can was found at the arson site. Okay. Any evidence on Melissa? It's still on her body? Okay. Any evidence on you? Any evidence in your vehicle? Any evidence in your house? Tell you what. Any evidence in your phone? You find any evidence on any of that, you can come pick me up. Okay. But you're not going to find anything because well, I didn't do anything. And we hope that's the case for you. You know, but if you are responsible for anything, let's talk about that now, get out in front of it, and yeah. let this community heal. And I, you know, like you know what I'm saying? saying? Let this community heal. There are people out there looking for this little girl right now. Yeah, there's lots of people. And if it was and my it, daughter, I'd be going breaking down doors myself. Yeah, you know, but I didn't do anything to the little girl. I haven't seen the little girl. I haven't seen Melissa in a long time. I haven't done anything. Okay. I was in bed sleeping. I'm sorry I don't live with anybody to corroborate that story. But today I was working. Yesterday I was working. Then I was fishing. And I haven't seen either one of them or talked to either one of them. But nobody can put you fishing. That's the hard part. And, and Even if people did see me, like yesterday, Jake, your cell phone, I don't know who it was. Your cell phone is not even close to where you say you're fishing. That, that's that's concerning to us. It's yeah, and I understand that, but I can't explain it. You should have been within a five mile radius of where you were fishing, and it's not. It's like forty miles away. Like I said, yeah, that's concerning. Because I kind of was like, oh, what was he doing? Mm -hmm. But I can't explain it because I was freaking fishing. The interrogator realizes that if James was fishing, he would have fishing gear in his truck. So they ask him if he has a fishing pole and a tackle box in his truck. Luckily for James, he keeps both in his truck at all times. Is there fishing rods in your Jeep? There's a fishing rod. Is there and a, a tackle, tackle box? box. Yes. You can't search my Jeep, but you can see, I'll let you see the fishing rod in the tackle box. Why won't you let us search your Jeep? Because at this point, I don't trust you guys. Did we lie to you? You're pushing me to say something that I didn't do. No, and to say no, that I Jay, had a relationship Jay, with Melissa. No, no one is you're pushing you. me to say Jay, I had a relationship no. with somebody I did not have a relationship. No, we are trying to clarify all, that ever. discrepancy. 
And I'm clarifying it. And I'm sorry she told five, six different people that she was in a relation, a sexual relationship with me. Okay. But it's not true. And and you said she said, you know, at first you, you were saying she was telling these people my name was Chance. I don't know a Chance. I've never been called Chance or Chase or whatever it was. Fair enough. I mean, so is it Jake or is it Chance that she has some relationship with? It's Jake. Huh? No, it's not Jake. She's never had a relationship with Jake. And I can't explain it. It's not my deal. You know, I'm... I wish I could help you find the little girl. I'm sorry something happened to her, but I have nothing to do with it. A dispatcher who worked in Big Fork, Minnesota, recognized Jacob Kinn's name and told police that Jacob owned a property about three miles from where the cell phone tower had pinged. With this new information, the detectives wrap up the interrogation and get ready to search the property the following morning. And I hope they find her safe and sound and we all do. You, re you realize if we find your any physical evidence on that stuff? That you're going to come looking for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here you could maybe help us by leading us to? Except for I can't, because I don't know anything about it. I realize that if you found some, you know, DNA or fingerprints or whatever on that stuff, they could, you know, make it look bad for me. But... I don't know anything about it. And I don't know where the girl's at. I you don't know, I don't know the, what happened. I don't know what happened to Melissa other than there was a fire. I mean, that is the extent of my knowledge. They began their search of Jacob's property, which was a huge piece of land in a remote area. Luckily for them, there had been some heavy rainfall the night before, so they could see where a vehicle had come and gone. They saw a set of tire tracks that led deep into the property. They followed those tracks until they came to an old camper with the door tape shut. Inside the camper, they found Brittany still wearing her pink pajamas. She was scared and she was dirty, but she was alive. Watch Jacob's face as the detectives show him that they have found Brittany and she is safe and sound. And you had no contact with the little girl? No. You didn't see her. She didn't come to your food station. You didn't see her at uh, Melissa's house. You don't know her parents. And there's going to be no connection between you and her. That's right. And what, whatsoever, in any way, shape, or form. Whatsoever. Okay. And no connection between you and Melissa. Well, um, not enough. Well, I mean, when I say connection, is there going to be any evidence that says you were in Melissa's house? Okay. Um, and that gas can that we talked about showed you a picture. Is that any of your evidence going to be on that? You know, DNA or fingerprints? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. So. Nothing's changed from last night? No. 100% sure? 95% sure. What's the fire reason? I'm tired and groggy, and you guys kept me up all night, and I yeah. tried to sleep, and I, you know. Sleep in a vehicle for two hours, I'm still a little tired, probably. Extremely tired, yes. Okay. But you didn't really answer my question. What was the question? What changed between two hours ago and now? Like, Is that the 5% that you're talking about that you're not sure of? Now, let's start over. <clears throat> what do you got to tell us? Not now is the time, Jake. Okay, we, we know more than you think we do right now. And and now's the time for you to fill in those blanks. And now is the time for you to come clean and tell us what really has happened here and what's really gone on. Now's the time for you to stand up and do that. 
Take us through the night. They searched Jacob's phone and found text messages between him and Melissa. Melissa wanted to give Jacob little Brittany as a gift and had proposed several different ideas to make that happen. Only Jacob knows why the plan was not carried out. Some speculate that once Jacob had Brittany, then Melissa was just a liability. Others say Melissa wanted to back out at the last minute and Jacob would not let her. Jacob received 52 years for his crimes, and Brittany is doing very well, despite what happened to her. At Jacob's sentencing, a letter was read that Brittany wrote, saying that she hated him and does not like the way he plays with her.